Let's wait, the power's on, away we go, and it's a good start from pole position, and it's a poor start from James Thorpe in the Victorini, but Alex Buncombe from pole is soaring into the lead. Miles Griffiths is following him to second place. You're on board with Nigel Greensill now in the Little Lotus as he tries to take advantage, and somebody just ran wide uh, outside of him there. Uh, whether that's going to come back, I think it has come back, yeah, so that's all right. Uh, is that safe for some? He's had a good start, because that's number seven, and he started down in the 11th place, he's got away well. Yeah, just looking on board with Nigel Greensill. Beautiful precision through the first two corners, the open first part of Patrick and the second, but then the grunts as the rest of the field came past on the rush down towards Fordwater. Up front, though, Miles Griffiths in the white and black TBRs keeping our pole sitter. Alex Buncombe, very, very honest indeed. Going to look up the inside, oh, into Madrid, backs out of that. I'll tell you what, though, third place, Murray Shepherd has come from the third row. Uh, that's pretty impressive. He was eighth on the grid, and Murray Shepherd now running in third position. Yeah, I think what happened with uh, James Thorpe uh, struggling to get away in the dark red bits are from the outside front row, bunched everyone up behind, so you get winners and losers in that, and if the car in front suddenly blocking you, you've got to back off a little bit. Nigel Greensill hasn't got the power, but when he gets down to the next corner, which is Woodcut, he should close in onto the yellow tail of that bit Serena. That's much heavier, much more grunt, but therefore has to be doing the braking earlier. And look how neat and precise Nigel Greensill is working the wheel of that little Elan. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that to see what he can do in that little group. There's Mike Whitaker. Mike didn't. Uh, yeah, Mike sort of got a bit, maybe a bit heavy. I don't know because uh, he didn't quite make the start either that, that he was hoping for. And the rest of them coming over the line. See, Ollie Bryant is actually just behind uh, Greensall as well. Up front, it's Alex Buncombe, who has that advantage by just under a second over Miles Griffiths. Still pretty close. There's the beat Serini of Adrian Wilmot, putting some pressure now under the uh, number three, Murray Shepherd, uh, who made that great start. There is Nigel Greensill that's got the onboard camera, so when we go on board, that's the little car. Here you are. Here's a replay on the, in the little Lotus. Let's have a look at this, Bruce, and see how it went, because we did see that rather poor getaway from James Thorpe on the left there. Yes, and, and those behind had to really adjust their line, and uh, certainly one of them went past. It was the other bits really. It was Adrian Wilmot, wheel smoke, tire smoking away, but then it was about to staying on the inside line, inside line. Now, look at this moment. It looks so uh, great positioning for <laughs> Nigel Greensall, but alas, as if pulled by elastic rope, uh, the AC Cobra in front pulled way, pulled way clear as they rushed down to Fordwater. As we get the first two now starting to make their break, Alex Buncombe is pushing on, but uh, second place, Miles Griffiths, and then comes Murray Shepherd. Adrian Wilmot will want to get fast. He's faster, was faster through his practice, and so Mike Whitaker in the blue metallic TBR also wants to get past that AC Cobra. James Thorpe also in the other Bitsarini is trying to now get back up after that rather poor start. He, it's dropped him all the way down to seventh place, so he was on the front row, um, didn't get away well. He's still down uh, a long way. He's down in seventh place, one, two, so you've got third there, fourth, fifth. That's the top five, and there could be a change for fourth position, not quite. A little bit of an attack coming up from Mike Whitaker there in the number 86 car. And then behind them, we do have uh, Bill Shepard, and then behind Bill, then we've got the number one, James Thorpe. That's the one that uh, lost out so much down in seventh place. Well, the first two cars, Alex Bunker and Miles Griffiths, uh, are pulling clear. They were separated by nine tenths of a second. Then they've got a four second margin. There they are, first and second. The number 64 AC Cobra, cool, calm, collected. Alex Buncombe, such an excellent racer of historic cars and always such a smooth individual, which isn't the easiest job to achieve with an AC Cobra, a car that people uh, compare many a time to a, a, a horse that's quite willful and may want to buck you off. <laughs> Absolutely right. Alex, as you say, a very experienced driver, part of a family that's uh, a part of motorsport for many, many years. He started racing in the British Formula Renault in the early 2000s, but quickly went into GT racing, very effective in that. Uh, there in the background, I'm just keeping an eye on James Thorpe, the second of these two you're looking at in the Bitsarini. And then we're looking at Nigel Greensill, who's coming under more pressure from Ollie Bryant. These two very different cars, the Lotus versus the Porsche, both uh, much less powerful than many of the cars around them. Both super talented drivers. This could turn out to be a wonderful little uh, duel between them. Yeah, you can see how hard they were pushing because Nigel Greensall isn't known as the, the last of the breakers for nothing, but he really went beyond his breaking point into Woodcut, locked up a bit, but kept the Lotus of land in line. The, the, board, the pit board's being pulled up as the front running cars come through. Bill Shepard's working so hard in the bright 47 uh, AC Cobra, bright orangey red and tucked in behind, still trying to make up for his poor start, is James Thorpe in the dark red. Um, 
Bitsarini looking to find his way past, but these cars have so much grunt, so he's not going to get it before the next corner. Side by side, uh, Bryant has got past. Yeah, he's managed to get past Nigel Greensaw. Ollie Bryant taking advantage there, and uh, Ollie Bryant has taken many victories here uh, over the years at Goodwood in all sorts of different cars and uh, uh, last year for example third place in the RAC TT uh, in the Cobra having led before the rain came out he's in a slightly less powerful car this time but he's just going to place but the top two are still close and interestingly the second place car Griffiths did set the fastest lap last time around yeah it's gone from 0.9 of a second to 0.7 of a second as the Griffith close in. I think their battle could yet be sorted towards the end of the race. They've got the pace. Oh, gosh, very, very deep into the game from race leader Alex Buncombe. But I think it could be back markers that might, may cost someone uh, some position on the circuit. But certainly the first two. Actually, a better exit from Chicane. So it's over a second now. 1.012 second for Alex Buncombe leading the 64 AC Cobra and in behind the number 180 uh, so this Griffith TVI. Now, this is a replay of the yeah. move where the Porsche with Ollie Bryant decided outside good inside better so took the inside line moved past Nigel Greensall got the move done into Ford Water and at that point you think oh nothing much to do except we've got St Mary's coming next we do indeed but uh, they're still they're still trying to catch up man they're not far off Bill Shepard in the very powerful AC Cobra you can see they're trying to close that gap largely control and there is an opportunity they might both gain a few more places before the end of this race yeah they may all do a lap ago we saw the uh, so the, the Bitsarini getting past that was James Thorpe who started third fell to seventh after that poor start now he's moving up the order a bit and he's, he's very quickly dropped Bill Shepard then wonderful mix if you like American muscle cars two Corvette Stingrays and tucked in behind two Shelby GT 350s an iconic race livery Isn't white it? with those big blue, blue yeah. broad stripes over the roof and down it's the lovely down to the see this they are rather a long way down the order I have to say James Alexander is in number 22 and he's down in 28th position number 44 is John Hugenholtz uh, who is the great heritage of motorsports of course uh, from Hugen from uh, from Holland and um, motorsport and circuit design don't yeah. forget Sandport and then the the, the the cousin Suzuka that's right yeah all part of the family uh, to those uh, track designs but they are right down towards the back but then you've got the Corvettes uh, having this great battle as well uh, Rob Jarvis numbered uh, in the number two machine and uh, then we've got the number 80 of Stuart Morley uh, there's not much to choose between the back we're back with the leaders and in fact on this last lap fastest lap's gone back the other way right they're Alex catching Buncombe. they're about to get up with traffic because uh, we've got the the, the, the Yukinori Suzuki Porsche in front of them, far less horsepower. Hopefully the Japanese driver will stay on the left of the circuit. And just a little pause there from the race leader, from Alex Buncombe, wanted to be sure that he'd been spotted. And I think that no one gained or lost of the lead duo. So it's a 25-minute lap race, 25-minute race. We've uh, got five laps completed, 17 minutes remain, under a second between the race leading AC Cobra and Miles Griffiths, Griffiths giving chase and pushing hard, trying to keep the tail of that TBR Griffith in check in second place. It's fascinating. Both these drivers started started their careers in sort of single-seater racing and then got into historic racing and have done brilliantly well over the years. But it's got a lovely E-type battle going on slightly further back. Richard Mines is in the number 111. Uh, both chasing after Saif Hassan, who'd made that really good start earlier on. William Paul is at the back of the group in another of the E-types. And it, it, oh, then he's actually made a little dive, trying to get past, not quite happening. Richard Mines holding on for the moment. Um, isn't it beautiful to see the E-types up against the AC Cobra? So, of course, the AC had British heritage and that the AC was a, a British company, but the Cobra with American power. The Jaguars, of course, all uh, put together in the UK. Never quite the same horsepower that the Cobras created. No, but they always had the handling. AC Cobras took a while to get the handling coming good, and you can see that handling being used uh, very well indeed by Richard Mines to get the poise and move on up in the number, the treble one. E type, but then of course, when they exit the chicane, there's a door wide open there. But I didn't expect the AC Cobra to dive to the inside. The grunt from the Cobra should propel it at least alongside on the start finish straight. And tucked it behind William Paul. Oh. Fancy some action. That was a little too close. You're right, though. He's got the straight line speed and he's going to have a go at getting back. But with that inside line, yeah, Richard Mines has done well there. He's just held the inside line through the corner. No doubt about it, the E-Type's got that little bit more speed through the corner, but they're now coming up to another section, which is pretty much flat out. 
Interestingly, the next right-hander in some cars, it is completely flat out. Some of the really powerful machines, you do have to brake a little. You did see the brake lights coming on there on the E-Type. I always know when people have raced uh, a lot of times at Goodwood, they say, well, Ford Water, you, it's not really a corner. When, when I've driven it, it very much is a corner, but it, it drops away as well yes. from the apex into a bit of a compression, then you've got to get it all scooped up and tidy, ready to enter St Mary's. That's right, and this is a nice, lovely section where it, it drops you away. Now, look. That Nigel Greensill's got a chance of getting back to Ollie Bryant. So we saw Ollie Bryant pass him a little while ago in the Porsche, but Nigel Greensill's not giving up. He's towing him down to uh, Woodcut. Is there an opportunity here? But of course, they've got to do some lapping as well. So that sort of closes up where he can go. Yeah, and they're both catching the car in front, which is Bill Shepard in the bright orangey red. AC Cobra just turning in and out of the chicane, gets so close to the wall, all of them there, over the curbing, you don't want too much curbing, it unsettles the cars, but then of course the, the Lotus Elan lose out every time, not so much to the Porsche in front, but definitely to the Cobra of Bill Shepard, which now is just turning into Madrid Corner. Yeah, so is there going to be another opportunity? Oh, look at that big slide for Ollie Bryant going out wider than you sort of normally expect, but he's, he's holding on to it very, very well. Alex Bumpkin is still our race leader with a, an advantage of just over one second from Miles Griffiths. We have just over 14 minutes still to go, plenty of time for some of this action to get even tighter. We've got this little battle further down the... This is way down, this is for 25th, but just look how close it is between all these American machines. But yeah, they started on the penultimate and the row, the grid and the row in front, and these four cars still tied together. The only change, in fact, has been uh, James Alexander going ahead of uh, John Hugenholtz to be the better place, those two uh, Shelby GT350 Mustangs, and again, the poise, the balance, but the rear shot in historic racing is always so fantastic because the cars are always short on grip, equally short on grip, but, of course, the tail will come round and nobody really complains when you're watching that. No, that's right. Uh, it's lovely to see those Shelby Mustangs. We saw so many Mustangs out earlier, of course, and they produced the wonderful race. But the, uh, the the link between Shelby, the man who had created the AC Cobras, he then did a deal with, uh, a further deal, if you like, with Ford, strong links, and uh, they started building the uh, the Shelby Mustangs at a, at a factory near the uh, Los Angeles airport. And um, it really did work. They, they got the uh, cars on track, and it was actually about beating the Corvettes. That's why they created them. No, exactly so. And uh, I don't think a day went past in the life of Carroll Shelby in which a deal was not done. And bear in mind, he was instrumental in developing the Ford GT40s from a car that Ford was desperate to use to beat Ferrari to one that actually could do so. Yeah, so he, the, the work that Carroll Shelby did, we, we celebrated him last year, actually. That was a lovely anniversary and a remarkable man. Great driver. He was a top, top-level driver, but also then the, uh, the, the processes he put together to create some of the wonderful cars that we still see here. Lovely to watch. So a few more Lotuses uh, out there. That's Alex Montgomery and another of the Lotus Elans. Lotus always uh, a very effective racing machine, uh, run by Colin Chapman, of course, the company that was so successful in the world of motorsport, but then creating road cars that would also go racing competitively. Now, what a... Oh, change of lead. We've just seen a mistake from Alex Buncombe, and this is what happened. Miles Griffiths nipped through. Miles Griffiths has just got through. We've got the spin as well for the number 78. E-type, whoa, round and round. Well, William has Paul. someone dropped some liquid? That was William Paul going for yeah. move. Now, was this because of bank markers and just a misread from our race leader, Alex Buncombe? Did he have to adjust his line? He <laughs> recovered remarkably well. He's still in second place, but uh, certainly that means Murray Shepard will be a little bit closer in third. But now, unfortunately for him, he's stuck behind that wonderful four-car battle between the Corvette Stingrays and the Mustangs. He's picking his way through that. He's still got one of the Corvettes to put behind him, but one little slip-up and suddenly a lead of what? He was a second. He's had a three-and-a-half-second swing. Actually, could have been a whole lot more than that, but he's lost the lead. Well, that is amazing. Oh, that was all a bit close as well, but that really has helped Miles Griffiths. He's now leading the race by quite a decent margin. So for Alex Buncombe to come back, this is going to be hard work. He's going to have to push, push, push. Still 11 minutes to go and he'll be fired up. When something like that happens, it picks up the adrenaline even more. He'll be pushing so hard to try and chase down the gap. We'll keep an eye on what that gap is as they come over the line. Yeah, now there is that question, was he giving 100% before? Because he had just gradually got away. He'd been thinking about tyre life. He thought, maybe I've got the measure of Miles Griffiths in the GBR. And if either of those cars are going to be one that consumed its tyres, you'd suggest it'd be the twitchier one, the GBR Griffiths. So you'd expect the AC Cobra, when driven brilliantly by Anthony Buncombe, to be comfortable in the lead. But one little slip, and about we go.
And actually, it's interesting because the gap is just under two seconds between them, but uh, it was Buncombe who was quicker on that last lap. So you're right. I think there is just that little bit more speed, potentially. Let's go back on board with Nigel Greensill as he is trying to get back past Ollie Bryant. These two, this race is going to go all the way to the flag, I think. And it's all about just getting the positioning right. Try not to make a mistake. Well, Nigel, you almost ended up on the grass there. What a shame there was a spy in the camp for Nigel Greensill. But uh, both of them are catching uh, Bill Shepard in that bright orange number 47 AC Cobra. And again, these battles could be decided by backmarkers, but the, the, the two cars, the Elan and the, and the Porsche, just don't have the grunt of the AC Cobra, but they certainly have the handling, and uh, those drivers, Ollie Bryant and uh, Nigel Greensall, making the very, very most of that. Yeah, it is great fun to watch. Uh, Nigel Greensall, winner of uh, 15 national and European racing championships over his years, and uh, he raced uh, 24 hours at Le Mans, got the fastest lap for a TV in a TVR, didn't he? Yeah, when TVR <laughs> dab, dipped its toe in the water, but you know, when you look at drive, across a driver's CV, lots of drivers win races, but very few win championships, and even fewer win multiple championships, so Nigel Greensall certainly has had an illustrious career thus far. Yeah, and over 100 lap records in his career as well, uh, not that they all still hold, of course, but he's taken, look at this, he's got alongside, he's got alongside Ollie Bryant, giving Ollie a little wave, but I'm not sure he will still be in front, let's see. Yeah, and he's got position at the moment. Uh, he's now checking his mirrors. Okay, Ollie, where are you going? Oh, he's actually waving him, is he or not? No, he's holding him off at this point. Yeah, he's got the place. He's got the place. Little lock up on the right front, but he's still sorting it. Oh, that's a classic moment to make a mistake, isn't it? When you just manage to get past and you're just looking in your mirrors, maybe a yard or two past your, your natural uh, point of retardation into somewhere like Woodcombe. But it was a great move. It was opportunistic. Yeah, and it was also because the Cobra actually was slightly in the way, I think, for Ollie Bryant. And that gave him an opportunity, didn't it? Yeah, because through the second part of lap, and that's the point at which, with the better handling, the smaller cars should be trying to eke an advantage. Just turning off ahead of the chicane is uh, car number number three. Number two, Sorry, Number Jarvis. two, beg your pardon. Yeah, Rob, Rob Jarvis in the Nick Jarvis own car. Now they're doing some lapping. Oh, the E-Type goes off. That was a moment ago. Sorry, that E-Type went off that they were just lapping. That was McFadden who made a little error. Thankfully, didn't get tied up. Uh, so still going well there, Ollie Bryant. But... Uh, well, but Ollie Bryant behind Nigel Greensall, but both of them still trying to take on Bill Shepherd. Now, this is where things do vary a little bit because if you have to end up lifting... Oh, he's down the inside! Oh, he's having a little look! Oh, my goodness, that was tight. What inside, Ben? The door was closed, but lock up in from the AC Cobra. Bill Shepherd will be getting a little warm under the collar now. And again, the better exit from the second of the Lamont corners. But it's well, cost him a bit of speed. It look. did, didn't it? Yeah, and that's exactly what happened, I think, to Ollie Bryant last time. He had to lift a fraction on exit because of what the AC Cobra was doing. And now he's got the straight line speed that Nigel had last time. And I think, let's have a look. Oh, no, he's just managed to get into the first apex just ahead. He's still in front. What do you do? You have to try. Both these drivers know in the Porsche and the Lotus, if they lose momentum, it's a bit of a problem. But... There's no point just sitting behind. They've got to try and unseal, unseat Bill Shepard down the inside to Lavin's one of the best places to try. But as we saw, Shepard closed the door. That meant uh, into the first apex. The Lotus driver, Nigel Greensall, had to back off. And uh, Ollie Bryant's been around the block enough times to know, hey, here comes a chance for me. <laughs> oh, it's just such an entertaining battle to watch. There's no doubt about it. Let me just tell you, up front, the gap between the leaders is coming down. Um, although on that last lap, Griffiths was actually quicker than Bunker. The gap is 1.5 seconds, so it's not coming down very much. It was 1.9 a, a lap or two ago. It's down to 1.5, but as I say, on that last lap, they are doing some lapping, though, bear in mind. And so sometimes you're not going to get the perfect lapping. And in fact, there is our race leader in the, as I say, lapping other traffic. Where is Bunker? He's there, and he's lost a bit more, I think. Yeah, well, he's gone back up to 1.7 seconds. Well... <laughs> Traffic, traffic giveth and it taketh away, but that time it was a save for Miles Griffiths because it looked so he just lost all the speed on the exit chicane, but uh, keeping it going in behind. We're starting to see a few cars with their tyres now starting to go off. There was, an ace, there was a Mustang in the background going very, very wide, and Bill Shepard, he has been passed. Earlier in the lap, he was starting to really understeer. The front washing away in St Mary's, Nolly Bryant may have noticed that. One, two cars going past because the Lotus sedan is having a crack as well. Yeah, he's done it. <laughs> Nigel Greensill's got past the AC Cobra as well, as you said. But it is uh, 
Ollie Bryant, uh, who has taken the advantage. Suzuki, uh, Yukinori Suzuki, getting so far out the way. I, hope, I think he was all right. He was just getting very well out yeah, in the background there with uh, his car. But the AC Cobra won't give up yet because it's so quick in a straight line. Nigel cutting him off to make sure he won't dive up the inside. So let's have a look at how this all happened then. OK, so actually, this was all getting very, very tight. Ollie Bryant was at the back of the group. So Nigel Greensill goes up the inside of the AC Cobra, and then it's all sort of turned around the other way. Back with the leader, still lapping some of the slower cars, as is Alex Bunker. Let's see what the gap is this time. It's going to be similar to what it was, I think, still around the 1.7. Second mark, over the line he goes. Oh, no, it's 1.49. So he's gained a little bit on that lap. Gained a little bit, just so I thought, ah, advantage Miles Griffiths, but actually plenty of good acceleration, as you'd expect from the blue AC Cobra. Brought it down to just one and a half second deficit. But we're into the final under five minutes remaining in this race. Corvette Stingray to be picked off, and every time Alex Bunker, who, remember, was leading the race, I think got a little bit caught up with the back marker, had a sort of semi-spin, and that was the moment the TBR pounced and Miles Griffiths went to the lead. He'll be counting the laps down. He'll be trying to pick off the back markers, put someone between him and the oppo, and the opposition right now is in that number 64 AC Cobra. Alex Bunker pressing very hard indeed. Yeah, fun to watch, there's no doubt about it. And uh, as we go on board the drone that uh, is giving us some wonderful pictures down at this section of the track, coming through St Mary's and down into Levant, you can see that sideways action that you get from many of the cars. Miles Griffiths still has the advantage at the moment as uh, we go back on board with Nigel Greensall. So now they're ahead of Bill Shepard. You can see him in the background, up ahead of him. And actually having pulled away a little bit this time, Ollie Bryant. These guys are uh, now seventh place for Bryant, eighth place for Greensall. Bill Shepard now has been pushed down to ninth, but the two Mustangs are still fighting each other hard, still down in the lower part of the whole thing. Uh, but it's great fun to see them competing against each other so close. Yeah, at this point, when you qualify 27th and 28th on the grid, the two Mustangs are John Hugenholtz and James Alexander. You're not expecting to go for race victory, but having a cracking battle between them. It's gone on from the very start of the race to now. The tail's whacking the dog a little bit more. The grip is starting to go away. This is a 25-minute race, but every bit of momentum that could be gathered by Miles Griffiths, he has to grab. He's now got two cars between his TBR leading the race and Alex Buncombe. He's working the traffic really, really well. He's counting it down. Three and a quarter minutes remain. Well, is this going to run out of time for Alex Buncombe? It's going to be very difficult to close up this gap, but... You never know how you're going to find traffic, and Miles Griffiths is trying to cope with that as best he can. He's getting through the traffic, I say, very effectively at this point. Um, Wilmot has just, I see, gone up into third place. Adrian Wilmot uh, in the number 81 Pizzarini. He's he's got up into third. They're a long way behind, but he has been battling away with Murray Shepherd, um, and that has been a, a little change in third place. Yeah, moved past Murray Shepherd, who had that fabulous start. You know, vaulted up from eighth on the grid up into. Third place is now falling back a little bit, but uh, there's no way these uh, top two are going to be caught. They're 25, 26 seconds clear of the best of the rest, which is now the bits better place than two Bitsarinis. Where's James Thorpe? He fell to seventh from third. He's in sixth place, not likely to trouble them, though. Yeah, I was just wondering how Miles Griffiths was going to go cope it actually into the chicane, because he had a car in front of him, but I think he's had a pretty clear run yet. I can just see from the commentary box he's come through with a reasonable lead. We'll just see what the gap is again. Oh, it's gone back to 1.7. So I think that Miles Griffiths is in pretty safe form now with a 1.2 advantage over Alex Buncombe they're still fighting their way through all of that traffic still focusing on this battle well a couple of battles going on this one is way down the field but it's still entertaining no doubt as uh, James Alexander there holding on now this is Nigel Greensill going past one of these Mustangs that we've just been watching go through the inside and then it's all pretty easy to get the second one too yeah, that was uh, the, the better place, those Mustangs, was James Alexander. The rear shots from Nigel Greensall's uh, Lotus Alain, there it is, treble three on the screen. Back to Bill Shepard's Cobra, fantastic. Because in historic racing, of course, particularly when the tyres start going off, they're sliding all over the place, and the Cobra is a massive handful. But uh, Bill Shepard is on top of that, not as much as Alex Buncombe is, because his Cobra, there it is, number 64, the dark blue metallic, metallic car chasing after the, the bluff-tailed as long as it's wide or as wide as it's long, TBR Griffith of Miles Griffith surely will get this one in the bag. He'll have this lap and one more to go. Murray Shepard has lost out a little bit uh, on the last couple of laps, hasn't he? So I don't know whether he's got a, a bit of a problem with the car, but uh, he, he's now dropped down to fifth place. Mark Whitaker, uh, Mike Whitaker rather, has uh, come up into fourth position.
a uh, bit of a block at the chicane that will have cost him a bit of time just to see but i think as they go over the line and they will be seeing the checker flag next time it's still 1.7 seconds uh, between griffiths and bunkham their lap times are, are comparable to within a tenth of a second every lap so that is why it's going to be very very hard and uh, miles griffiths had one chance in this race and he grabbed it with both hands. A little bit of a sideways moment in traffic for race leader Alex Bunkham. And now he's stuck in behind the number 111, Richard Mines driven E type. Richard gets out of the way, but a little bit of momentum was cost there. And surely that will be enough because this is the final lap. It's looking it's good. Enthralling Graham Hill Trophy race. Yeah, it's looking good for Miles Griffiths. Always a lot of success here at Goodwood. He had a, a third place in the Sussex Trophy uh, last year and he won the Madwick Cup uh, in. Gat Goodwood uh, in 2022. He's had other major victories. Uh, a winner in GT40 at Spa with Gordon Shedden on one occasion. Um, he's raced more than 20 different cars in his career, and I think he's rather enjoying his experience in in this particular one. It's uh, it's working out very very well for Miles Griffiths in the TVR Griffith with his name. Yeah, one letter, what's one letter between friends? Griffith, Griffiths, but it's been spectacular, and again, it's just great to have two cars that look so incredibly different, trading lap times to within a tenth of a second. They've pulled way clear of the best of the rest, that's Adrian Wilmot having moved finally up into third place, but here comes the run to the final, final flag. The Grand Hill Trophy goes the way of Miles Griffith after a wonderful battle with Alex Bunkham, but it's Miles Griffiths who has taken yet another victory here at Goodwin over the years, and that was beautifully done. They had such a great battle. Unfortunately, Alex Bunkham had that slide, uh, got into a bit of trouble, sorted himself out. Now, third place is going to go to the Bitterini, the number 81. Uh, I think that's going to be able to hold on quite comfortably in the end. Yes, it is. Adrian Wilmot is going to take third in that glorious-looking machine. Quite a, a rare car, of course. But well, well, hold on a second. Okay. Oh, no, you're right. Wait. Murray Shepherd's come back up somehow yeah. on the final lap. I was looking for the black and white uh, Cobra. Didn't expect to see it in front of Adrian Wilmot. Don't know what happened to Adrian. His lap pace did fall down a little bit, so maybe he suddenly had a problem. And Murray Shepherd, who'd gone down the order, came back up. He takes fourth place, but third place, making it two TBRs in the top three. Miles Griffiths wins in one, and Mike Whitaker, along with Murray Shepard, gain from whatever happened to Adrian Wilmot. And then the battle that we saw earlier, Ollie Bryant gets seventh, Nigel Greensall gets eighth in the end. Bill Shepard and the AC Cobra couldn't quite keep up with those two, uh, but it was a wonderful race that we saw between them in that slightly slower, slightly further down the top ten. But it's Miles Griffiths from Alex Buncom. Top two and third place, as you say, for Mike Whitaker. In the end, it was a, a great result for Mike Whitaker.